Hey everybody, today we're going to be making a pistol, a Samaritan from a Hellboy cosplay. Uh, I ended up doing this one a little different, and I thought about this in the past, but every time I make it, I always forget to do it. Which is to make it with a removable orange safety barrel plug. That way, if you need to get into a convention and you have to have your safety orange tip, there you go. And if you don't like it, you can just... Take it out for photos. Okay, and the patterns for this are up on Facebook. A lot of this is just strips of foam. There's not even patterns for half the parts of this. And a cardboard tube from some wrapping paper. So yeah, if you want to build along and make your own, go ahead and check out the description below. There will be links to the patterns and other fun stuff. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is cut out your number one, number two, and number three pattern pieces. And I just simply traced out one, flipped it over, traced out the other. And you'll notice I cut all the edges of these number twos, which there's two of them, at an angle. And they are five millimeter foam. Uh, pretty much everything we're going to do on this is going to be five, except for a couple things. And then the number one piece is just cut as straight as I possibly could. I'm not perfect. Uh, on the five millimeter. Now I have two other number one pieces that are cut out of half inch foam. Now you'll notice the back side of this half inch foam here has this texture. This texture is heat set into it. What that means is this is a pretty hard rigid uh, area of the foam and what this does is it makes it hard to glue because the foam isn't as porous and doesn't absorb it as well. So I'm not going to sand this off completely. You'll still see the texture but I am going to sand it so that it is smooth uh, and so that it, it, it will absorb the glue a little bit better. Same thing with my other number one. And as you can probably imagine, the three of these are going to be sandwiched together. Okay. Then the number three pieces I cut flat on the front, but an angle on the back side here of each one. Okay, I've gone ahead and glued the number one piece to itself. And to do that, I'm actually not using contact cement. I'm using super glue. And the type of super glue I'm using is Gorilla. And you'll notice the tip is missing. I didn't do that intentionally just so that I could, like, pour it out faster or anything. It just kept clogging, and I kept cutting it down with scissors until finally I had to cut off the entire tip. And I don't know why it kept doing that, but yeah. So there's an actual... Uh, semi-legitimate, well, several legitimate reasons as to why I'm using super glue as opposed to contact cement. Uh, what super glue does is it doesn't so much have like a stickiness to it that bonds as it has a actual uh, chemical reaction between the two pieces that just kind of like burns them together, just sort of like fuses them there, right? And whenever it does that, it causes especially the foam since it's so porous to really stiffen up and become quite rigid and that's kind of the whole reason why I prefer to use it on props like like knives or swords or whatever unless I have something in the center of them that is solid and static so that the piece itself is less flexible and the other nice thing about this particular uh, brand of super glue and what it does is gives you a second before it really sticks so that you can line up your piece how you want where you want and get it as even as possible so it is positionable unlike contact cement which pretty much bonds instantaneously and you have no room for error once it's there it's there and that's pretty much it whereas with this you get a little bit of time to position the pieces before they totally glue solid. Okay, so I've let the super glue, the Gorilla glue, uh, glue brand, sit for about an hour, and then I went and grabbed a different type of super glue. This stuff is liquid, and it's kind of runny, but it's good for what I used it for here. This is the original super glue. I picked this up at Dollar Tree for like a buck. Where they get it in the tube or in the little containers, it's all the same stuff. And what I did was dripped it down into the seam here. And where I did 
is pretty hard now. It's still soft on the outside, but it doesn't want to flex or move so much. Uh, like I said, the super glue and the chemical reaction that it causes really helps to or really helps to stiffen up the foam. And next, I'm going to take my Dremel rotary tool. And I'm going to even all this stuff out first and foremost. Uh, like this isn't perfectly even. So I'm going to sand all this flush, get all this straightened out, etc., etc. Okay, now that everything is nice and even, for the most part, I'm going to go ahead and start to round out the grip here on the inside and the back. Okay, I've gone ahead and put some shape into it. Uh, you can see I've rounded this out here and rounded it on the sides. And not so much on the bottom and the front, but I did deepen it much more rounder in the center here between this point and this point. Uh, slightly curved off these edges. Of course, I left this square because this is where my barrel and everything is gonna mount. But yeah, I put a gradual rounding here, but I really did cut in and got it nice and round on the backside so that it hits, uh, fit, fits my hand pretty comfortably. Okay, since I want this Samaritan to have a rather oversized barrel, what I've done is taken a piece of cardboard tubing and I have cut it to seven and two thirds inches. Uh, I'm gonna then wrap it in five millimeter EVA foam. I'm just going to cut a section of it, roll the foam around it, mark where it stops, cut it off, and then I'm gonna super glue it to the tube itself. Uh, the EVA foam is gonna overlap a little bit and I'm gonna cut the EVA foam eight inches wide. Okay, so to make it easier for me to glue it to the tube itself and so I get it a little bit more solid, I've taken my Drillmaster heat gun and I have heated the foam and just put somewhat of a curve into it that'll help me to join it. And I also want to point out that I did cut it a bit longer this way, so if I need to, I can trim off some excess. But whenever you heat foam, it tends to shrink a little bit. So I gave myself about an extra third of an inch and once I glue this on, I'll glue just about an inch at a time using the super glue. Uh, and then when I get down to the last half inch, I'll match it up and trim off any that I need to. All right, so I got the foam glued onto it. And I've now begun on the bottom scene here, or seam here, to sand it down with a Dremel initially. But then I've actually been using this piece of old skateboard grip tape to just hand sand it flat because that's where I'm going to glue the bottom piece and I'm also going to go ahead and I took a sharpie and just kind of drew a, a rough center line here so I can make the top up here flat just like down here and that way I kind of have an initial guideline along with just eyeballing it to get it as even as possible okay I've got both ends flattened out pretty good here and I left the end that I'm going to actually attach to the frame totally flat but the front end of the barrel I have rounded off with my Dremel and next, I'm going to go cut some 1-inch strips of 5mm EVA foam and start attaching them to my tube. Okay, so I was just talking about 1-inch strips of foam. Technically, it's about an inch and a quarter. Um, uh, right, we'll line it up. Yeah, inch and a quarter for both of them. And I cut these out of 5mm as well. 
and I also took a little bit of this pipe that I had lying around. Now this is roughly the size of, of a Bic uh, ballpoint pen. So if you want, you could just hacksaw off a section of that. That's what I did here. Uh, the section that I hacksawed off is just a little bit over a half inch wide. And if I can show you here on the edge, right there, you'll notice some scuff marks. I did sand it up uh, on the areas where it will be bonded. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this in here, followed by gluing my strips uh, from there out and from here out on the top. Okay, so my barrel has been lined up and glued onto the frame and that little piece there which is meant to rep uh, represent the swivel mechanism so this can break open you'll notice I also have one there on this one so that he can load his comically large uh, ammunition into it so that's what that is for it's also going to mark the place where our trigger guard is going to go and it is also going to mark the place where we're going to start gluing on our one and a quarter inch strips to both the bottom here and the top just like I did there okay so I've glued on both the top and bottom strips and when I got down here to the end what I did was I took a pair of scissors and I just snipped it off at an angle on both ends okay However, I didn't throw those scrap pieces away. I saved one and cut it about three inches long. And that is gonna go on the top here, just like that. And once again, this will be super glued on. Now, since I was gluing on these strips and they're a large area and I wanted to reposition them, I switched back to my Gorilla Super Glue instead of the normal runny liquid instant bond stuff. That way I could reposition it and get everything as lined up and straight as possible. Alright, so I put the top piece on like I was talking about and next I took a strip of 5mm EVA foam and I cut it a half inch wide by three and a quarter inches long and that is what made the trigger guard. There's not a pattern for that, it's just a strip of foam. Uh, I cut the top ends a little bit angled so they would fit in and I just glued them in place with some super glue and then I also went ahead and did the grip pieces as well and super glued them on also however I do want to point out I did end up trimming the bottom of them flat initially I cut them angled but uh, I actually need them flat for whenever we make the butt plate okay the next thing I've done is I took a strip of 2 millimeter EVA foam and cut it the same length and width essentially as the 3 or sorry the, the 5 millimeter that I used for the trigger guard here and I glued it over top once again using super glue and then put a bead of it along the edge here and just kind of smooth it out and that helped make this a lot more uh, firm and stable with just the piece of 5 millimeter EVA foam it wants to just kind of flop everywhere and now it is pretty static all right, next you're going to cut out the cylinder piece, and for this, if you notice by the pink, just like with the trigger guard, this is 2 millimeter EVA foam, and I've already glued one on using super glue, and I'm going to glue this one on to this side. All right, now that I have both cylinder pieces on, I went ahead and put on my number three pieces, and it did take a little bit of patience and finagling and a stuck finger, but I did get them on. And once again, I used super glue, and I started by gluing the top edge here. And once that was on, I put some super glue along the bottom and pressed this as firmly and evenly into place as possible. All right, now that I got the cylinder on and starting to do some details, you'll notice this red spot there. That's actually some acrylic latex with silicone that I just happened to have red dye in, or red paint actually, rather. But uh, that's there because I kind of melted the foam by getting my heat gun too hot. But anyways, first thing I did was I took my Dremel here. And you'll notice these divots here and here. I did this on both sides. Uh, actually, it has to do with the rotation mech for the revolver cylinder on an actual, like, real steel revolver. And 
Then I took an X-Acto knife and I cut a line to distinguish the cylinder. And I'll flip this over to show you the non-burned side, although this one almost got a little bit too charred too. But once I cut that line in there, I heat it with the heat gun to help the line to expand. And now you'll notice if you look at the little uh, plastic piece right down here, you notice it's green inside. That's because I took some scrap EVA foam. I cut out a couple circles and wedged them in there and then put some super glue on them. I've let this sit about a half hour for the super glue to dry. And this isn't really necessary, but I want to do this, so I'm doing it. I heated up my hot glue gun. And what I'm going to do is fill in each side of this with some hot glue. And I'm take it right up to the top and stop. Hopefully that will either do one of the things, it'll, it'll either uh, dry, concaved, or convex, generally. I put the glue in there, I'll let that sit and cool, and do the other side, and then we can come back and check it out and start working on things like the trigger, and the sights, etc. Okay, so I have some of my detail pieces cut out, which is going to be two hammer pieces. These are actually uh, going to be glued together first like that so it forms one thick piece you can see I had the same thing here on this one and I cut out a trigger however the, the, the trigger that I actually did on this one is a piece of plastic from something I think a nerf blaster that I cannibalized and the rear iron sight which will be glued right there also five millimeter eva foam now as far as the front iron sight what that actually is, is a piece of two millimeter eva foam it looks kind of funny you can see there's already a crease in the middle uh that's because you're going to bend it in half and super glue it together and that should help make it nice and rigid at least rigid enough for a prop that you can pull in and out of a holster and then that of course will be lined up in the center and glued on there just like that one all right, I got all my various detail pieces glued on. The trigger that I put a little bit higher up than what I did on this one. And the iron sights. And also the trigger. And I also took a couple screws. They are pretty small. Uh, number 8 by 3 8 inch uh, Hillman screws. Not, I think that it really matters. I would have used any spare screw I had, and I just happened to have these. And what I did was I went ahead and screwed them in first, and then unscrewed them, and took and put a drop of super glue in, and quickly screwed them back in so that they will not come out. Next is to make the thumb release. Now, on this one, right here is actually a piece of plastic piece. I didn't make this out of foam. This is actually a plastic piece off of a toy plastic flintlock gun that I thrifted for like a quarter or something. Uh, I was just in a hurry at that point and pretty frustrated since I'd botched a lot of stuff on this, one of which being the front of the barrel here, which I never did quite get right. I got it as straight as possible when you look down it, but from the side, you can still see that I basically stretched the foam because I glued it too far down and just, that was one of many mistakes on this. But on this one, I'm actually going to go ahead and cut out the patterns and glue them on and show you what that looks like. Okay, I've gone ahead and cut out the two thumb release pieces and glued them on. There is a small notch in it that's meant to line up with the corner here, so uh, it should be pretty easy to figure it out. And this bottom butt plate, since any handle you make is going to be different even one to the next, all I did, you can see some of the sharpie down here, was just sit this on a piece of scrap 5mm foam and just trace around it. And then cut it out mm, pretty symmetrical. And just glued that on. And that's going to pretty much wrap up the build on this. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I need to do except seal and paint. Okay, so before I go ahead and do the final airbrushing and painting, of course I had to seal it first. And you'll notice it is now black. I sealed it with uh, Plastidip. And you can pick this up pretty much anywhere, but as always there will be some various Amazon affiliate links down in the description if you just want to order some. But I usually just pick mine up at my local AutoZone or Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever. And I only put a couple coats on here. That way it's still a bit porous as you can see. And next what I'm going to do is overspray all the metallic parts with my airbrush. And what I'm going to use for that is 
Kratex has a line called Wicked Colors, and this is the Wicked Silver. And I never want to put it on, I usually don't put it on too thick and too heavy. I leave some of the black sh uh, showing through. And in areas where there would be more, and wear, uh, more wear and tear, like the outside of the barrel here, I will apply this silver a little more thickly, like on the edges, and a little more thin in the, in the areas where there wouldn't be a lot of contact or rubbing. Make that look a little more tarnished, a little more dark. All right, I've airbrushed it up. Like I say, doing a little thicker in areas, like through here, where I feel like there'd be some wear, or in here, and left it a little bit darker, like in the recessed areas there, and like the top of the barrel and the bottom of the barrel what meets with these flat areas here, and a little bright on the ends, etc., etc. Now I'm gonna take some black paint and touch up any areas here on the grip where I got the silver on it. I'm going to go ahead and paint all that black again. All right, once I painted the grip black, I took some acrylic brown paint and went ahead and just dry brushed some on. Now, it doesn't pop very much, and you'll notice that if you compare it, say, to the other one, there's a much more rich look to this. And that is because of the clear coating process. The clear coating really makes the brown pop. And it's the same shade of brown, but as you can probably see on camera, it looks almost like a different shade. Uh, everything looks different once you apply the clear coat. And the clear coat that I like to use just so happens to be made by Mod Podge. And grab this here. It's the Mod Podge Super High, sh uh, Super High Shine Clear Acrylic Sealer. And the reason why I like this, especially on foam props, is that it's flexible. So sometimes, say if you have like a normal uh, spray paint type acrylic that you would pick up from, you know, Lowe's or a hardware store or Walmart or wherever, Krylon or any of that, whenever it dries, it dries very hard, which makes it brittle. So if you would squeeze it, it ends up sometimes making spiderweb cracks. And this may wrinkle a little, but it usually doesn't do that. So that's why I've been using this stuff, although it is a little on the pricey side at $10.99 from Hobby Lobby. Okay, now that it's been sealed and painted and all that stuff, let's talk about the difference between paint jobs on the first one I did and the second one I made in this video. Now, for my local conventions, I can't have anything looking too real steel. And this one I did put a little bit more silver, so it's a little brighter and a little more garish. This one, of course, I didn't. And this one, I think, looks <laughs> way more realistic. However, uh, reading the rules for the upcoming convention, if it looks realistic, basically don't paint it realistically. Uh, even if it have an, has an orange cap, if it looks too real, they won't allow it. So that was kind of the other uh, mental reasoning behind making a second one of these, was make a bigger barrel. You'll notice the barrel is slightly larger on this one than this one, so it looks more toy-like and more comical and goofy like something out of Roger Rabbit. And like I said, the other thing was just to have it look a little less realistic. Ultimately, they may not even let me take this in. It may go on the trash can at the door. I don't know. So, next thing I'm going to do, since I don't want to paint the front end of this orange, I'm actually going to make an orange barrel plug. And I'll show you real quick how to do that. Okay, so for the orange end and the barrel plug, what I did was I took some of the tubing that I had left over that I used to make the barrel. And I cut a length of it out. Made sure one end was relatively flat, the other one is just kind of wonky and whatever. That'll be going on the inside of the barrel. And what I did was I cut a slit straight down the middle and stuck it inside of the barrel itself and saw how much it overlapped. And then I just trimmed off the excess. And then I taped it together on the back side with some duct tape and then put some super glue on it just to help make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Then I took a piece of half inch foam and I cut it out to the size that I wanted to match up with the barrel here. And then I already glued some orange foam on the outside and trimmed off the excess. And next I'm gonna use some more super glue and glue this orange foam around the edge. Once that's done, I'll glue it all together. And to attach this to this, I'm actually gonna put it on and just gob some hot glue down on the inside to make sure that it stays there. Okay, so here it is with the barrel plug in it. And now it has an orange tip if you want to take it to a convention. Or the other thing is, if you happen to be mailing something like this, you can't just mail any fake toy prop uh, firearm without an orange end or a special permit to do so without the orange tip. So that's another handy dandy thing. Or if you want, you just take it out. So you can take photos or videos or use it for a fan film or whatever. But yeah cheap, easy, quick. 
And now, just real quick, there's no patterns for this, but I felt, you know, it was worth putting it in here. But I'm going to blow through it real quick so it doesn't drag the video out to like an hour and a half or something. Is I've taken my prop pistol, and of course you can do this for anything. Not just uh, this particular one. But I draw a line following the, the, the highest points of contact, which would be like the sights, the hammer, and the front sight. And I line that up, and then I just kind of draw out the shape that I want my holster to be. Right here, you'll notice, and you see where my finger is, it gets up real close to the trigger. That's going to be one of the stops, so that the prop pistol won't go any further. And then I just bring it down along the inside of the barrel here. And what I'm going to do is, I've taken another piece, which I've figured out how I want the shape of it to be, which is just a slight slant here. So whenever I glue it, I'm going to glue it like this, almost like the wall to a house or something. And then I'm going to heat it and start folding it over until it matches up with the shape of this. And then I'm going to glue it and trim it off. All right, now that I have the side here glued together, I have moved my prop pistol far away from this because I'm going to be using my heat gun to get the foam here hot. And then while it's hot like that, I'm going to start pressing in the shape of the pistol itself. It doesn't have to be exact, just enough that it'll fit tightly so it's not going to flop around while it's in there. And so that, you know, it'll, it'll hold snug as I move or whatever. And I'm going to gradually, you notice I just pretty much just heated this area right here. And I'm going to go back through and heat the other area and gradually just heat it into shape. And then I will cut off the excess and glue this edge to the outside edge of the bottom piece here. Alrighty, so I have glued on the other side after heating it, and then I heated the holster a little bit more with the with the heat gun here, but of course made sure the pistol was out of it so I didn't damage it or the finish, the clear coat, or any of that stuff. But heated it up there just to flare this edge out a bit so that it'll make it a bit easier to withdraw and put the pistol back in, especially since this will be on the front of my right hip and I will actually be drawing it with my left hand and not my right so that'll help me to put it in there or take it out and like I say if I don't want it for photos I can just take out the orange barrel and yeah as far as how I'm going to attach this to a belt I actually have some scrap leather laying around I already started hacking into shape and what I'm going to do is, is contact cement that on the inside flush up against the back of this and then this will just loop over the back here and I'll glue it on the very bottom and it'll make a belt loop that I can put my belt through and I'm not going to put a tie down or anything since this pistol is so light and this holster itself is pretty stiff it doesn't really want to flex so I don't think it's going to bunch or anything and once I put the uh, piece of leather on here that should stiffen this up enough that I'm pretty sure I should be able to draw and withdraw the pistol pretty simply out of the holster. So that's pretty much it for this video. Okay, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, the next Hellboy video is just going to be the cosplay reveal. And I'm also going to go through at the beginning of it and talk about some of the other stuff that I either bought and didn't make or had to buy an altar or my fiance made or she bought and she altered for her own Hellboy, gender bent Hellboy. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good ideas for your own cosplays and as always I really do appreciate uh, everyone watching the video and if you enjoyed it please leave a like and if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to see more content like this please subscribe and as always have a great day